You know Vicente, right? Yep. Trained with him a little bit. Did you? He might a be bit. a little big big for you. He's not bigger than Ryan. Same weight class. Vicente. Hello? Vicente, yep. what's up, big dog? What's up, guys? How are you? How got... you been, man? I'm good, man. I'm doing good. You got us good? Yep. All right. Yeah, good. Stan the man, Dennis the menace. I'm sure you know Dennis well yeah. enough. Yeah. He said you beat him up a couple times. No, he beat me up too. Oh, <laughs> stop. But welcome to Menace and the Man. It's glad to have you. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Okay. So uh, what's going on with you, Vicente? Anything lined up? I know you just had that fight with Wonder Boy. It was your last one. Yeah, nothing lined up yet. You know, uh, after Wonder Boy, I just felt I needed to take some time, especially, you know, to work on myself. This uh, 2019, I had four fights. So I was training only for my next opponent, my next opponent. I, I didn't work, you know, my game and on improving myself, becoming a better fighter. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like whenever, when I was training, I was trained to beat anybody. I trained to be the baddest motherfucker ever. So it didn't matter if you changed the opponent on me last minute. Okay, I'm going to still beat him up. and I'm going to do what I do and I'm going to do it to everybody. You know, and then as the fight got closer, I would tunnel it a little bit and tailor it to maybe he throws, you know, a lot of kicks. I'm going to check him or he's a lefty. I'm going to work fighting a lefty, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to work like that also. And but I've been fighting so much that I had to, you know, uh, work a little bit on my opponents. And I had my opponent change when I was going to fight Neil Magny. He had to pull off the fight at the last uh, on the fight week, so I, I got a change of opponent. But it, anyways, I was trained to fight anyone, so you know it's it's kind of that mentality. You always got to be ready for whoever it is. It doesn't matter, you know, what style he's gonna bring. You got to be able to fight anyone. Yeah, I always think you're a weak fighter when you're scheduled to fight somebody, and they switch out the opponent. They're like, "Whoa, I don't, I don't know about this." It's like, what do you mean you don't know about this? You're a fucking fighter. You should fight I mean, anybody. <laughs> yeah, we, that, that's the thing. That's I, I started fighting in 2009. So I'm kind of, you know, from a little bit, the last of the old school guys. Yeah. You know, I, I always watch the guys. So my mentality is I'm always going to, you know, take a fight. I'm not the kind of guy to back out, especially because I love fighting. I love stepping in there and, and just fighting another guy. You know, that's what I do for a living and I love doing that. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's going to be last moment opponent. I'm still going to get in there and have fun and do what I do. Yeah. And th what, you're living down in Florida, right? No, I live in Brazil. Oh, you live so in Brazil? I'll, I'll, yeah, right now I'm in Brazil. Okay. And, you know, so when I'm close to fight, sometimes I go to Florida or whenever I have, you know, some time off and go there to work with the guys at, at Sanford MMA. So... Yeah, I'm I'm always back and forth, but mainly in Brazil right now. Okay, what what's the what's the what's the ticket from Brazil to Florida? How much is a plane ticket? Uh about a a thousand dollars, something like that. Okay, okay. So you write that off in your expenses to train, obviously. Yeah, sure, for sure, definitely. And then who are you training with down in Brazil? So in Brazil I train in Cerrado MMA. I lived in Brazil since I'm six years old. I was born in Jersey, but then moved with my mother to Brazil. And I started training at 15 with the same guys I train nowadays here in Brazil. And together we put up the team, Serato MMA. And I've been training here ever since I started. Who are, are you the only like star in that gym? Are there other stars that fight in Bellator or in UFC that train at that gym? We have a girl fighting the UFC, okay. Vivi Araujo. Uh, her last fight was against Jessica I. Okay. And she's the she's the she just got in the, in 2019, and we got a lot of kids that are up and coming. Some fighting in Russia. We had some fighting in Japan. So we're starting to you know grow and get some guys into the big leagues. Okay. And then, uh, do you do do you, do the, do the guys in Brazil? Do you guys cross train with other gyms in Brazil, or are you only a little in that bit. one gym? 
No, I only go over here. We have all the training. But, you know, I used to train a little bit with Guto Inocente. He fights in glory. Okay. And he has a gym here in Brazil. He lives here also. And we always kind of cross-train. But right now, we have kind of like all the things we need. We got a Cuban guy from wrestling. We brought him from Cuba to oh, train wow. the wrestling part. And we have about 25 to 30 professionals right now training. So, you know, we, we got some good guys and, and good material to work. Yeah, and I don't know if you know it, Stan. Like Cuba's nasty at wrestling. Nasty, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yoel Romero, of course. Yeah. I know their Olympians are usually tops in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good wrestlers. But yeah, Vicente, I was being a little quiet there. I was trying to fix the video, but now we got you up and running. So okay, cool. Now the fans could see Vicente Luque. But yeah, I thought yeah. I thought you were in Florida. That's why I wasn't giving you like the the Eastern time. I was saying, yeah, if you're good for six, you're good for this time. But what time is it in Brazil right now? It's eight, so it's just two hours difference. Not that bad. Okay. Oh, good. I thought it was night and day difference. No, no. Brazil's uh, like South Africa, is it? South Africa? No. South America. Yeah. We're, yeah. But we're, South America, yeah. Just yes. with, yeah, we're just aligned with the U.S., but down south. So it's not much of a difference in time. Man. All right. And I heard you say Sanford MMA. Are you guys switching over now? It's no longer H um, 365. You guys are moving, right? So uh, I'm I'm not one of the guys like all the time in the team. So I, whenever I go there, whenever I go to Florida, I make sure that I work with Henry wherever he is. And now the transition is going on. You know, they are training at Sanford and at Hard Knocks. I'm not really. Uh, I don't know how it's going on. So I've just seen them training at Sanford MMA, and it's it's how they're going now. So I think it's it's a big uh, new thing. The the facility looks great. I haven't gone there yet, so I just make sure that I work with Henry Hooft whenever I'm in Florida. I just feel you know he he has a lot of good things, not only in striking but a great vision of MMA and the striking game. I'm a striker myself, so we you know we always work really good, good together. Yeah, at first I saw, I think Michael Chandler was the first one I saw, like, sponsored by them or training with them. And then all of a sudden, slowly but surely, I see all the H kickboxing guys repping their gym or shouting them out or training there. What is Sanford? It's like a medical facility of some kind, right? Yeah, something like that. It is. So that's a Henry question. We'll have to save that one for Henry. What's going on with that? Yeah. Henry's going to know how to, how to explain all of it better. Okay, okay. So now, you just come to America for fights, or do you come for vacation? We thought you lived in America. No, so I'll, my, my dad lives in Jersey. Okay. So when, whenever I can, I try to go visit him. I have uncles and aunts also that live in Jersey. Uh, my grandfather lives in Jersey. So I got family there. Whenever I can, I have some time, I go there, visit them. And I go to Florida to train. But most of my time is in Brazil. Uh I've been living here for a long time, and I, I just enjoy it here. My mother's here. My wife is here. So I just, ah. you know, it's home for me. <laughs> Ruined my next question. I was like, you single, dude? <laughs> Do you get, man, because, like, in Brazil, I heard, like, if you were out in the clubs, like, girls don't give you, like, a hug. Hi. It's like a makeout session. That's how they say hi. <laughs> yeah, a little. It's, it's a little bit different culture. I think that whenever – Guys from the U.S. come over here. They really kind of get surprised with how how everything goes in Brazil. We're just passionate about everything, even about friendship and, and, and seeing everyone. So it's it's a little bit uh, different than the U.S. Okay. How would how would Stan make out in Brazil? Would he pull some girls or what? Oh, definitely, Do man. Do they like he, big, he... fat, like hairy guys or? <laughs> no, no, no. They, no, they, they don't. They, they would... like ripped tan guys. He's a good... What'd you say there? We lost you for a second. You're a good-looking guy, man. You're a good-looking guy. I know. I get this often. Menace just likes to hate on me because he's short. That's all he's got on me. He makes fun of me because I'm a little chubbier now. I got a beard. You know how it is. Yeah, but he doesn't dance. I dance. What Dancing's do you mean? Dancing's a big deal in, in I dance. Brazil, what are you no? talking about? I dance. I've never seen you dance, Dan. When have we ever gone to any type of a situation where we're going to dance? Uh, Monsoon. Oh, what are you talking about? One time? When you had, you know, less than attractive women for me to dance with, that's different. That's a different story. Dude. That's a different story. It's all about, it's worth that he can dance. 
Yeah, I can I I can dance for Santa. Don't listen to him. Even our (laughs) funny segue there. Remember a time when you were training at Long Island MMA and the dude broke his leg? I I don't remember. He broke his leg. I remember I was training there, but who broke his leg? I broke my leg. Me. Yeah. Yeah. You were training. Yeah, Yeah, he wasn't as fat. I wasn't as fat. I was skinny. I was in way better shape. Maybe a little tanner. Yeah. One time. No, me and you didn't get to do a round. I broke my re- I broke my leg like the second round of the day. Remember, he was yelling. Yeah, I remember he was some- yelling like a little girl. Now- no yelling. I took that shit like a man. Yeah, I remember that. That's why I, you didn't yell that much. So that's why I wasn't so like, man, this guy broke his leg. I thought you were good. Yeah, the ambulance. You- remember the ambulance came. He couldn't. Yeah, he yeah, couldn't yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't scream I at all. I was like, John Gotti like, was like, oh, my God. He reacted more than I did because he was like, he felt bad about it. Yeah. They remember I mean, and, and LaFleur was there too, Ryan. Yeah, I remember yeah. Ryan LaFleur was like, yo, move over. I'm trying to work. Yeah, I remember that. that was was it wrestling? I think we were wrestling or not. We were doing uh, a, lo- a live MMA. round. Yeah, yeah takedowns. Yeah. And then once you got to the ground, it was live. Yeah, and I was uh, – trying to avoid a body lock and we just wound up in a crazy position and snap and then it wasn't we well, got like, that or not what'd you say you got back to training after that you no, he never good. recovered no not yet i haven't recovered yet. mentally physically emotionally <laughs> yep yep and yep yeah it was one of those man you gotta train yeah i gotta get back to it i know nope. What it is is when people break their leg normally, it's like a broken leg. I, like, really fucked up my leg. Anderson broke his leg bad, and he's Bro, he got back to I had a doctor that I showed him Anderson's leg break. I showed him Paul George, the basketball player's leg break. He was like, that's a different type of leg break. They both broke their, I, they both broke their leg high, or I broke my leg low. So I, like, you know a little bit about the anatomy of a body, like the tibia, the fibula? Yeah, I, uh-huh. They both exploded at the bottom. So I had to get like a specialist to come and put it back together like a jigsaw puzzle. But it's all back together, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I got to get back to it. I got to get back to it. I've done some mitt work with Menace a Listen, little bit. Listen, your, your like excuses are not going to work for him. I'm not giving an excuse. I'm giving yes, an explanation. Like the type of leg break I have. Like Anderson Silva came back. They told me never to run again. Like you can't run anymore. And that's exactly what you wanted to hear. You're like, okay. I can't no, remember. not at all. It was heartbreaking. I'm like, but fuck you. to segue back to dancing, when I first broke my leg, the first thing I asked, I was like, when can I train again? When can I dance again? And they were like, what are you talking about? I was like, that's how I pull girls. I dance and I train. That's what I do. I've never seen you dance to pull I girls. I broke my leg. I don't dance the way I used to, but I can dance. I'll show you this weekend. You just got to just step <laughs> like this. What do you mean? It's all in the hips, dog. You've seen me do a two-step. Where? Everywhere. I don't just I thought stand. you were just like... Being antsy. No, come on, I dance. I would beat you in a Dancing with the Stars. How did you How did you meet your wife, Vincente? So uh, I met her a long time ago. We studied together, so that's that's when I met her. So you guys went to college together. Yeah. What was your move? Well, because like, you're a always, boxer, because you're a knockout. Whatever way I feel like, you know. So I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna go there and be shy about dancing. I just do whatever I feel like doing, and usually it works out. So uh, I just feel like you don't got to think too much about it. Just go there and be yourself and do whatever you want to do. It's either going to look cool or it's going to look funny. But either way, they're going to be laughing and they're going to be happy. So let's say, all right, I'm going to take what you said. I'm going to just put it in how I visual. So I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Like, would that be okay if I just grabbed? Did you ever do Man, that? I- Oh, it, it depends where you are. Okay. And what's the situation? But maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of your moves, Dan? No, 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 no. Not in America. Maybe in another country. Oh, okay. Well, it would never be kind of like a, a police trouble, but there could be some guys that are going to try to jump you. So it, you got to be aware of where you are. So yeah. in Brazil, you're well known. No one's trying to fight you, right, if you go out. Yeah, usually they're not, and I'm a quiet guy, so I'm never into trouble. But, you know, there are some guys that, I mean, you uh, all guys that used to fight in the UFC that have gotten into trouble, especially because guys here, uh, they like sometimes to, to fight a guy from the UFC just for the, you know, if he beats him, he's beat a guy in the UFC and he doesn't even fight there. So right. it's the 
kind of thing that you got to be aware. There are some guys that want to just get into your face just because of that. But I'm a quiet guy, so I don't get into trouble. Right. Yeah. Brazil, but Brazil's been ahead of the curve. They're ahead of the United States as far as like they had Valley Tudo and Luta Livre. What do you mean? It's a fucking jiu jitsu. No, they've been fighting longer in uh, Brazil than they've been fighting in America. I thought you were saying like as like a country. I'm like, no, not at all. I'm talking about fighting. Uh, like, no, I, not as a but in fighting, like, people here, they, they fighting is in our culture a lot, especially at growing as a kid. Uh, most of the kids get into fights in school, get into fights, you know, uh, on the streets. That's just something from the culture. And whenever uh, we get older and we try to get into fighting and, and into competing, you know, uh, we can focus all that energy into something good. So that's a big trouble that happens here. You know, a lot of kids get into fights as they're young. And as a martial artist, we always try to, you know, work them and get these kids that have a lot of talent and put them to good use. All right. I got two questions for you. One, how many street fights have you been in, like, growing up? Man, uh, give it's me a not... Round, a, give me a roundabout. Not, but most uh, from, let's say... From 12 all the way to 15, every three weekends out of four weekends, there would be a fight. Oh, so you were fighting a lot growing up. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I did Muay Thai when I was 15. And that's when I stopped fighting in the streets, uh, street fighting after that. I, I had one street fight after that, after I was training. And my coach and uh, the older students beat me up at the gym so i didn't want to find the streets anymore all right they beat you up for using your skills in the exactly street. okay yeah all i right. thought i was cool you know i just knew more than the guys in the street i'm just gonna take advantage but i had to pay for it somewhere and i paid for it in the gym yeah yeah i grew up training so i would always get into scuffles if you will and then it was like, it's not fair. It's like, so when you get to a point where, like, you realize that, you almost want to talk people off that ledge. Like, yo, I don't want to fight you. Just stop. Like, it's it's not what I'm into, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's it's a different level. Yeah. Uh, for, I, something I do here uh, a lot is there are the special forces, uh, special operations of the police, and they have courses, and they'll call some fighters to go there and do the fighting part of the course. But basically, it's beating the shit out of them. And these guys are police. They're police officers on the special forces. And it's a different level. You know, I, I beat these guys <laughs> like, oh, if they didn't know how to fight. And they know how to fight. So if you're going to beat a guy that really doesn't know anything, it's it's definitely unfair. I mean, it's it's not fair at all. Not bare knuckle, like with gloves on, no? No, it's with gloves, yeah. Okay. So usually have gloves, big gloves, shin guards, and my mouthpiece, and they'll just go with a headgear and MMA gloves. So, so you have like if, a little bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, I, I mean, if they connect, I'm in trouble. So I got to make sure that I, I beat the shit out of them quick. Damn. Yeah. How much does that pay? So uh, we, I don't do it for money. I do it for as, as uh, you know, just making sure I give back to the to them because here it's a big. <laughs> It's a big thing, uh, violence. Yeah. So these guys, guys that go into the favelas and go into the, you know, real bad shit and just make sure that we're safe. So I just try to give back in, in my own way and, and wow. make sure I appreciate it. That's, that's ironic. You like to give back the <laughs> fucking policemen up. Bro, we'll even yeah. re remember. Like, yeah. Stan would love that. What? I would give back to the police, if anything, and train them to be better equipped so they don't. You hate police. I don't hate police, but. <laughs> I have had situations with the wrong police, but then I have friends like Lido, you know, good cops. There's good cops out there. But then we even had, we had Henzo Gracie on the show, and he told us some funny stories like that where he would almost police the streets as a jiu-jitsu guy. And the cops knew him, and the cops would work with him and be like, no, Henzo, like, we need you. And then at one point, he, like, I forget the story, the exact particulars, but he had like a house of people, and they protected the neighborhood. Like he was his own police force if you will this shit. there's a lot of that here you know yeah uh some places there aren't enough police and there aren't enough people to just keep it safe and and people are not just gonna take you know getting robbed getting all kind of of bad things or they're just gonna take 
on to their own hands and, and do what they got to do. Yeah. And I mean, maybe a gun is the highest form of self-defense, but jiu-jitsu is right underneath that. Yeah. If and here is not as easy as the U.S. to get a gun. So that's a big thing, too. You got to know how to defend yourself some other way because you, you cannot have here's prohibited. No civilian can have a gun in Brazil. Guys and the cops. It's crazy. But that's how it is. That's good, though. That's gun control. Yeah. Um, so I need you to. So the second question was, tell me your most badass uh, street fight. Why did it happen? Where it happened? How to go down? And how did it end? I would I would say. How old were you? The, that I, the last one I had, and that I got beat up at the gym for, it, it was because of my best friend. He always was the reason that I got into tr into trouble. He was a short guy, and he liked you know just to get into fights with everybody. And I was bigger than him, so I tried to go in there. And, and just, you know, protect him in my own kind of way. So he got into some tr trouble. The guy tried to push him and whatever. I got into the fight with this guy. And I think the guy knew some Muay Thai or something. He kicked me on the leg. I grabbed the kick and threw a straight punch. We kind of got into a fight. And one of my friends tried to jump him at the same time I was fighting him. So I grabbed this guy and I pushed him away. I pushed my friend away and said, no way, you're not going to get into this. It's just me and him. And then we keep going into it. But then everything lost, you know, we, everybody started fighting. And then the, the party just finished. And a lot of people got hurt after that. But it, it wasn't a good night. But at the same time, I think it was uh, the fact that I wanted to just go me and the guy. And I wanted to make it fair. I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Yeah. I would be like, yeah, you got him. Fuck this motherfucker. You should have fucking whipped me. Motherfucker. So now, you have any siblings or is it just you? No, it's just me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually fighters, we've noticed a trend like you guys got brothers. So you've been fighting with your brothers or getting in street fights with the brothers and the family. That's usually how it happens. No, I, I, I wish I had a brother, but I didn't. So I just had to fight. You know, as a kid, I trained uh, martial arts when I was really young. My mother is a black belt in karate. So I trained karate as a kid, but then I stopped. So what I would do a lot is just uh, imagine myself fighting. That, that's what I most played as a kid. So I think in some kind of way, I trained fighting with, the, you know, shadow boxing, whatever. And I did that a lot as a kid. How, what age were you like, all right, mom, I could beat you up? Ah, uh, I think never. Yeah, I was going to say, still not to this day. <laughs> but, you know, she trains Muay Thai. She trained Muay Thai some years ago. And I got to graduate her uh, on her first kind of levels. And we sparred. And I kind of made sure that I discounted a little bit of whatever she hit me when I was a kid. So wow. it was funny. Wow. It was and you hit your mom like that. I was like, she she's my mom. If I'm tough, I know she's tough. She can take it. Wow, that's that's, that's fucking that. funny. I don't know. Like, what's the move? Like, no, beat, but she's what's the move? Like, beat the share your mom and buy her a nice dinner, or like let her win and then like no, she, buy she, you dinner. She, level, so it's good. Just beat her up, and then and, you know when you touch gloves at the end of the round, but like, you won that round. Just tell her she won yeah. that round. Yeah, you won that round. Don't worry. <laughs> you won that. She's round. like bleeding. Yeah, but even oh, if it, you that bad. It, you win it if you actually win the round. She made you, so she won that round. Technically, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. she's doing good. She's doing good, and she's into fighting a lot. I mean, she's every every Saturday is sparring. We spar on Saturdays, and she's there every Saturday filming me. And then we watch the all the tape together, and we make sure she points out whatever she thinks is going on, and I'll listen to her. Not always, I don't always agree, but you know, I, I try to take something out of it. Now, how old are you? I'm 28. Oh, so yeah, you're still young in the game. You still got a couple of years left yep. doing this. I'm like, shut up, mom. Who's the professional? Here? <laughs> Not you. How much money you make fighting? Oh, this much? <laughs> That's a lot. I made Sometimes. a lot more than you. But you know how they can pull that? Your mom can pull that car with how much money did you make fighting? I made as much as you. I didn't put it in my pocket, but where you came from, you know? Like, yeah. Fuck off. They can always pull that car. Like I gave, I, I gave you birth. I gave you life.
No, you're yeah, looking. The, you got he, into the map for the first time, so. No, Dad nailed you. <laughs> He's like, no, Dad nailed you. That's what happened. I'm my dad. I'm my dad's son. I'm not your son. <laughs> no, I'm both, but like, you know. No, yeah. I, I'm good with both. My dad also. I have a lot of fun with him. We try to talk as much as we can, and I, I came here when I was six years old. So I grew up a way, far away from him, but whenever I could, whenever he could, especially. He would buy me a ticket, and I would go visit him in, in Jersey. And, you know, we have a really good relationship. He's also uh, was a guy from the sports. He played rugby until he was 43. He yeah. is originally from Chile, so he's Chilean. And he played on the national team. He, he played in South Africa for the World Cup. So it was, it was pretty cool. Damn. And so your mom is Brazilian? Yeah, my mom is Brazilian, my dad is Chilean, and I'm American. Do you, do you speak all three languages? Yeah, I speak Damn. Spanish, Portuguese. Yeah. Okay, Bloody. that's awesome. You're bilingual. You're actually... You no, should, he's trilingual. Trilingual, multilingual, whatever you want to call it. Idiot. You would have been the perfect guy that like we, we've been trying to get into or talking about getting into. Maybe having someone oh. that speaks a different language type of thing on the show. But your English is great. We and even, need you to translate. That was almost an area where we're not trying to be racist, but we've had it a few times. Maybe it was me. Oh, I thought you were pointing at me. We didn't know how good your English was because we thought you were Brazilian. But th that's the thing. I, I am Brazilian, but I'm American also. And the big thing was when, when I got to Brazil, uh, my mom learned English in the U.S. And so did I. When we got to Brazil, she she told me, we're just going to speak English so you don't forget it. And with my dad, I've always spoken Spanish, and I speak Portuguese to everyone else. So, you know, both my dad uh, my dad and my mother, they made sure that I would not forget, you know, uh, the language I knew how to speak. So I, to this day, I speak English to my mom. Because I went down to Hard Knocks in May. And I went into the gym. I talked to, like, Big Steve, Linton Vassell, a couple of the guys that were there. And I saw Ung, and I kind of, like, shook his hand and then just walked away. Like, I didn't think he spoke a word of English. Then we had him on the show, and he speaks better English than all of us. And he... No, I think he lived in the U.S. for as a kid. I'm not sure if it was as a kid, but for a long time. Yeah, he grew up in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but uh, you know, like sometimes you're not, you don't mean to be like racist. He's or, racist. No, I'm not. You Stereotyping. Didn't, you didn't know he spoke English that well either. That's a lie. Yeah. Stop Bermuda's only spoke Spanish. Yeah, exactly. He, spe he doesn't speak a word. <laughs> he doesn't speak a word. Yeah, I do. Paquito. <laughs> what does Paquito mean? It's little. <laughs> Two S Gordo. So yeah, the only thing he knows is Paquito. Uh, E and, and all he talks about is dick size. That's all he knows. Uh, poquito, poquito. Tu, tu es sucio y gordo. Yeah. What does that mean? Fat? You're fucking dirty and fat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's got jokes. But yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't always judge a book by its cover. Because you look at Ung and you wouldn't think he spoke English, but he speaks English very clearly. Yeah. And especially the biggest thing about him is he's a double champion. But whenever you meet this guy, if you don't know his background and you know don't know that he's a double champion, you would never believe, you know, he's even a fighter. He's a super nice guy. He'll talk to anyone. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't care what, what you are. He's just going to talk to you just because you're you. And, and he's a great guy, man. He's, you know, an awesome dude. Oh, awesome. We had him. We had him. We had Henry on the show one episode, and he got us Robin Van Roosmalen and Ong. So we had both. I, Gilbert got into that a little bit too. Yes. I saw it on you Instagram. It, oh, you're a fan. Okay, I like that. Yeah, Gilbert jumped in on a little cameo. Yeah. Yes, we might get Gilbert on right after you actually. Nice. Yeah. He's going to fight here in my hometown. Oh, my God. Damian Maya. That's huge. Wow. Yeah, he's fighting against Damian Maya. It's going to be nice. Who do you got? Uh, fight. Who's the better jiu-jitsu practitioner? I'm gonna man. On paper, who's the, on paper. Who's the most accomplished guy? I know that Gilbert is three times world champion as a black belt. So I would say he's the better jujitsu guy. If you go into MMA, who uses it more? I believe that Damien uses it more. But just because Gilbert is so skilled in wrestling and in, in striking, 
You know, sometimes Gilbert doesn't need to use the jiu-jitsu. So it's that kind of thing that, I don't know, if you just go for the MMA side of it, yeah, Damon uses jiu-jitsu much more than Gilbert. But I think that if they go to the ground, Damon will be really surprised with, with, with what Gilbert's going to bring. So I if, mean, they it, if they just had a jiu-jitsu match, Gilbert would win in your in your mind. I, I do believe that. I think he would submit Damon. Wow. Submit him, not just beat him, submit him. Yeah, I think so. I mean, have you ever seen Gilbert competing? Especially, I mean, he has competed a lot now, and he's yeah. super aggressive. And before when he had, you know, uh, he only fought uh, jiu-jitsu or no-gi, whatever he did, he was super aggressive. He was always looking to finish. So he's not that kind of uh, slow jiu-jitsu that's just trying to gain position and slowly get into the, a submission. He just goes for it. He doesn't care. He has cardio to keep going you know, as hard as he wants to go. So I think that he would definitely uh, submit Damien in, in a submission match, just, you know, uh, submission rules. Wow. So in my head, every Brazilian that lives, that, that fights in the UFC is a black belt. Are you a black belt? No, I'm a brown belt. Oh, wow. But I'm the You're the first Brazilian fighter in the UFC I've met that's a brown belt. <laughs> I'm a brown belt in jiu-jitsu and luta libre. And the thing is, I train mostly nogi. So okay. my jiu-jitsu my jiu -jitsu master, he always tells me, I'm only going to give you a black belt whenever you train a full year of gi. And I told him, one day I'll do it, but I'm not going to do it right now. So right. <laughs> Yeah. I've only um, trained gi like three times, and I'm a white belt one stripe. Yeah, but I, I don't like. I've choked a lot of people though. We we talked about this. Gilbert's gonna be the one to promote him to blue belt. Okay, that's cool. What, that's what we're gonna try to make happen one day, on a live episode of Menace and the Man. Wow, that's wild. One day. I don't happen. even own a gi. Can you give me a blue belt? I don't even own a gi. Bro, I, which Gracie? Like Holes Gracie or one of the Gracies gave Rashad a black belt because he knocked someone out. It happens. Yeah, but he owns a gi. He own, he might own a gi, yeah. I don't know if he wears a gi that often, but he owns a gi, yes. Wild. So you feel like that's a stipulation of whether or not you should be promoted to blue belt? Like, promote me with a gi first. Like, all right, you could do jiu-jitsu. What if he gives you a gi with a blue belt on it? Hmm. So that's almost the type of promotion you want. You want a gi with a belt on it. Well, if I had a gi, I would like probably train it a little bit. Or you want someone to give you a gi with your one-stripe white belt around it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even own a belt. <laughs> Do you have a belt? <laughs> it's, it's at the gym somewhere. Yeah. Maybe. You don't well, even have a belt. Greg, it's it's like Greg has it somewhere. He's never given it to me, but he it's says the, that's what I am. It's there. Yeah. So now, Vicente, are you like a fight fan? Do you watch the fights, or are you just a fighter? I I do watch fights, but less than I used to. So whenever I started uh, getting into fighting at in 16, I used to watch every single UFC and everything. Nowadays, I focus mainly on my division and whichever, you know, uh, guys that I like to watch, that I enjoy watch fighting, you know. Max Holloway is a guy that I, I'm always going to watch his fight. That's a guy that excites me to watch. And Aldo, that's another guy, Jose Aldo. I, I love watching his fights. Shogun. I'm the biggest fan of Shogun. That's one of the guys that got me into fighting since the beginning. I used to watch him before every single fight of mine. I just watched a lot of Shogun. And, you know, he's not doing that well now. I think he should he should retire, maybe, you know. But at the same time, whenever he's going to fight, I'm excited to see him. I know he's just going to go in there and do what he does. And, and be it win or lose, he's going to put everything he has in there. So I I like watching the, the guys that I enjoy watching. Shogun's doing okay. He won a couple fights in a row, I believe. And then um, his last fight, I think it was... I oh, Who would who'd he fight last time? He fought the... It was like... I a, think he fought... Jimmy Crute? Is that who he fought? But I remember it was, I it was a draw. A back and forth yeah. fight. That I, I, thought, was, I thought Shogun initially won. I think it was in Europe or was it in Brazil. I'm not sure. But I, I had it for Shogun. He started losing, then he lost. He won the second and third. Yeah, he was. In, oh, Paul Craig. 
is who he fought last yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. And it was a, a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was it? Like whatever. In Brazil. Out. Yeah, it was in Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Sao Paulo. I thought I had that fight. Yeah, I thought he but won as well. Never know. Judges, that's something I don't like to to leave it to the judges. You never know. Oh, yeah. We've seen that be a bad situation many times. Yeah. Dennis knows it all too well. I mean, you never know. These guys are, are just sometimes, I don't even know if they're watching the fight or they're just, you know, it, it's a long night, a fight night. I mean, you got 13 fights. Each fight is going to be at least 30 minutes, kind of something like that. So I think these guys are sleeping sometimes. They're not really paying attention to the fights. It's kind of crazy. For sure. Well, I think they even rotate the judges out a little bit. Oh. Probably not. What do you mean? No, I think they do. It's not. I. I have to. It's not the same three judges for every single fight. I disagree. It's the same as the referees. I think that they swap them out. They have like five judges on tap. Yeah. Yeah, and they swap them a little bit. I. Th I believe so. I'd have to double check on it, but yeah, double check. I will. I will. So, are you going to be watching this weekend, Vicente? I will be watching, man. I'm. I'm excited for McGregor and man. Cowboy. Uh I don't know. I'm interested because I think it's a moment where a lot of things could go on with this fight. I think that Cowboy could go in there and, and you know, if he takes it to the later rounds, I, I don't see McGregor winning, especially because he has gas in so many fights. But you never know. McGregor has heavy hands. He's got the timing. So we got to see what kind of McGregor is going to be in there. So many years without fighting. I don't know. It's going to be... Interesting. So real quick, so this fight's at one fifty five now? Seventy. It's at one seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Vincente, where, what weight class do you fight in? One seventy. Yeah, that's weird. Like, let's say Vincente's in there against either or how's it go? I think it's a knockout for me. <laughs> Woo! Do that aggressive. I mean, both both guys are guys that are gonna go in there and strike. You know, and that's what I'm going to do as well. And whenever I step in there with a striker, I just feel it's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. I love doing that. And, and I know what I bring. I know my skills. So I definitely believe I can knock these guys out. So now training at Sanford and in Florida, I'm sure you've done rounds with Usman before, right? I have many rounds. And we've been together, you know, training together since uh, the Ultimate Fighter 21. We both were in that show, and whenever I'm there, I'm, I'm getting work with him, and he's a beast. He's definitely a beast. Physically, he's one of the strongest guys I've ever trained with, especially at 170, you know. You don't see guys strong like that at 170, and he has a gas tank to go, uh, I mean, more than five rounds. He could really go more than five rounds. And it's the kind of training, you know, I'm really excited to train with him whenever I'm there because he's a champ. And he's the champ for a reason. You can test so yourself. There, yeah, exactly. See where That's you're at. I want to feel what a champion is like. And, you know, whenever I train, I just feel like, hey, I can hang with a champion. So I, I have to keep working and have to keep doing what I'm doing to get there one day. I mean, you're not that far away. So say you're two big wins, two or three fights away from potentially, would you guys ever fight each other? Or is that like a gray area or... That's something we've talked about, and we would fight each other, especially. It's, it's from Business. both our personalities. We're professional guys, and we love fighting, not for hating uh, you know, our opponents or anything like that. We love the challenge. And what, kind, what bigger challenge would it be than to fight a teammate, you know, a guy that knows uh, your strong points and your weak points? So it's, it's the kind of fight that excites both of us. And if it comes to it, if it's for a title fight, you know, we would definitely fight each other. It's awesome. Yeah, and even like we've seen it with you guys are both managed by Ali, right? So I've seen yeah. that a little bit. Um, we had it with Henry Cejudo and Marias. Marlon, yeah. And now we might see it with depending on what happens in April with Khabib and Justin Gaethje. Yep. And we might see it with the the more the the sport grows, you know, the more this is gonna happen. Uh, it's a sport. At the end of the day, it's a sport. It's not about me liking or disliking or whatever. I got to go in there and work. Especially, if I want to be a champion, how am I not going to fight the champion, you know? Uh, and 
being a friend of Kamaru, I want him to hold the title until I get there because I want him to keep being a champion. So logically for me, it makes sense. I'm going to fight him because I want him to keep being a champion. I want to fight for that title. So it's going to be both of us. That's awesome. Yeah. And now Robbie Lawler, too, is in that mix as well. Yeah, yeah. You've done I mean, there are, we got Gilbert. Gilbert is one number behind me now. He's fighting at 170. So, Ooh, you I know, a, but Gilbert is a different, uh, it, it's different. We're just too close. We, as much as we can avoid that, we're going to avoid that because we work corner each other every single time. We train it uh, whenever he's here. He comes here down to Brazil sometimes. And he uh, stays at my house. I go there. I stay at his house. So there, it's it's a different thing, you know. It's we're just we're just yeah. brothers. Yeah, you guys always want each other to win. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, the only thing I was even if you guys fight it, each other, yeah. someone's got to lose. O only for a title. I mean, we would hug each other for a title. It's crazy, but I don't know. I don't know. It, it's tough. With Gilbert, it's tough. We're we're just too close. We want each other to win, and we want to, you know. It's always been uh, us against the world. That's kind of mentality when we're together and when we're training. You know, we have this this brotherhood, and it, it's just special. It's 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 different. Yeah, yeah. South Florida, and granted, you guys are a little bit from all over, but South Florida between American Top Team and the Age Kickboxing guys, Black Zillions, I don't know what you guys call yourselves now, three sixty five guys. You guys are the top welterweights in the world like one through ten one through fifteen is all of you guys yeah i mean there's a lot of talent down there and whenever you put these level of guys together under really good coaches and like greg like henry like kami all these guys that are there you know watching us and making sure that we're having the best uh training sessions we can there's no other way guys are gonna get better we're gonna sharpen up each other and and you know we're and in future, we're going to dominate uh, most of what we can dominate. So it just makes sense, you know, training everybody together. Doesn't matter if we, at the, at the end of the day, if we need to, if everybody from Hard Knocks is gonna, just going to be fighting each other and, and having fun. Oh, for sure. If it pays, absolutely. I mean, if we have all the 170 guys up there, it's just going to happen. Oh, definitely. And yeah, that's a possibility. Or. Best case, like, I don't know how old Gilbert is. Gilbert's a little older, right? He's like 32? I think so. I think he's 32, yeah. Best case scenario, it takes you, you know, two years, maybe three years to get to that title shot, and Kamara's done by then. So you don't got to fight him, and maybe you could fight somebody else. Yeah, that's the best case scenario. We, we never know. We never know what's going to happen, you know. Just going to keep ready and, and see how it goes. I just make sure I work as hard as I can, and whenever I get in there, I'm ready. Did you watch uh, Kamaru versus Colby? Yeah, I did. And, uh, man, that fight was exciting. I love that fight. And it was crazy because Colby, you know, people can hate him. And, and I'm not a big fan of this guy, but I got to give him respect because he really, he's not going to back down. He went in there. He was in Kamaru's face every moment. And he got his jaw broken and he kept going to the last round. So, you got to give him the respect, you know, for, for really being a fighter and, and being there and, and doing what he does. But at the same time, I had it for Kamaru. And since the beginning, I knew Kamaru was going to win. I thought it was going to be easier, easier than it was. I think it was kind of complicated, especially on the striking. I felt like maybe Kamaru was going to use the wrestling, you know. But at the same time, he, he has been evolving so much on his striking. And he showed in that fight. I felt like... Kobe was more of a boxer, and Kamaru showed, you know, he's versatile. He can do everything. He can box. He can kick. He can go in and out and, and just show that he, he's the better fighter, you know. He's a champion for a reason. Oh, 100%. Even uh, there's been reports going out now that he had a broken hand in the fight. Yeah, and, and Kamaru is a guy that living with him uh, in, in the Ultimate Fighter, I've seen him struggle sometimes with some small injuries in training. But he's the kind of guy that he, he's never going to let that get into his mind. He's never going to, you know, uh, back down from a fight for no reason. He has no excuses. And he and even like even when he does win fights and, and goes through it, he is not the guy that's going to talk about it. You know, somebody's going to have to find out 
and, and tell people that, you know, he was going through this or through that because he really doesn't, doesn't care. It doesn't matter if he's injured or whatever. He's just going to go there, do his work, get out, and, and, and get the win and be happy and whatever and move on. Yeah, like you see guys sometimes, like I know Dennis, I don't think, would you, you, the only fight I ever remember you pulling out for was Staff. Yeah. But like you fought hurt before. Yeah. Vicente, I don't remember ever seeing in the news that you pulled out of a fight. Like a lot of times oh. you see guys pull out. Like Conor McGregor, or Cowboy, I've never remembered either of them ever pulling out of a fight. They fight hurt. Usman, same thing. Apparently he broke his hand. You'd maybe know better than we would. He broke his hand like two weeks out or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, he, he had it a, a little bit before the fight. But it, it's just the things that we got to deal with it, you know. And, I mean, a lot of people talk about sports and they don't get why uh, sportsmen and, and, for example, fighters get paid what they get paid. But we get paid because we go through things that other people were, would not want to go through, you know. And that's one of the things. we Sometimes we got to be hurt and what, it doesn't matter. We still have to get that paycheck and get that win. We didn't work three months for a fight uh, just to get out of it because of a small injury, you know. If I have two legs, if I have another hand, I'll go in there and, and use that. So it's the kind of things that we got to do. Oh, for sure. You've been quiet over there, Menace. <laughs> I mean, you guys are talking. I don't know what I... Like I... Just, oh, all right. I'm just checking on you. Just checking on you, making sure you're still there. I used up all my content. <laughs> you got no more questions I left? I got nothing. That's it. All right, Vicente. So what are you hoping for next? What's the next logical date for you when you're trying to get back in there? Right now, I look at April. I think April or May. That's something logical. My last fight was in November, but beginning of November. So I had November and December kind of really light training nothing too hard just resting up my body and now january i've picked it up you know getting uh really uh high intensity training so i think april or may that makes sense for me it's it's gonna be a good time for me to get back all right so now do you do most of it in brazil what time what's the time frame usually when you head back to florida so uh, it all depends uh, what kind of fight I'm going to get, when I'm going to fight. So sometimes I'll do Florida first in the camp. So m my camp usually is eight weeks. I'll do Florida first, then Brazil last, and then fight. Sometimes I'll do Brazil first, Florida last, and fight. Sometimes I'll just do Florida. Sometimes I'll, I'll just do Brazil. It's more about what, what the fuck the you feel like doing. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it all depends, you know, what who I'm going to fight, where am I going to fight. If I'm going to fight in Brazil, for me, it just makes sense to be here, you know. Yeah. And just a, it's no time difference, no climate change. So I just feel like training here. But if I fight in the U.S., maybe, you know, it makes sense for me to be there for, for two, three weeks, maybe four weeks before. Now, yeah, you guys don't have cold in Brazil, right? No, I mean... No, we don't get cold ever. It's it's the thing is I I know temperature in Celsius. I'm not I don't know in Fahrenheit, but the coldest we get is maybe 15 Celsius. That would be like 68, 70. Yeah, it doesn't snow in Brazil. No, never. No way. Yeah, no. It, we it's get a fucking rainforest, Stan. I'm just asking. I'm yeah. just letting <laughs> asking that. Did you take third? Did you pay attention in third grade? Yeah. When I talked about rainforest? Not really. I was a bad student up until, like, high school. Then I got Like, kids. it's humid, and there's fucking monkeys and tigers running around and shit. Yeah, of course. It never talked about snow one time. I'm just putting it out there. Other people might not know. I wasn't asking solely we for myself. We don't want people that didn't pay attention in third grade to listen to our show. We want everyone to listen to our show. No, I don't. 100%. I don't want idiots. <laughs> well, your co-host is an idiot, so I was asking for myself. No, I'm just joking. Uh, oh, my God. So, Vicente, we didn't get your answer before. Cowboy Connor, who do you got in that one? I got, man, it's 50-50, but I would say for the timing, for I think Cowboy is going to get it just because he has been more active. And I think that, you know, if he has the experience to take that fight into where it's his comfort zone, so if he keeps smart, takes care in the first round, and takes it to the later rounds, I think he can take that fight. Connor, you're saying? No. Cowboy. Uh, cowboy, Cowboy, yeah. Okay, so you 
Are you p- making that pick? You pick this cowboy in the later rounds? Cowboy, later rounds. What do you got, Stan? I'm going to go. I think Connor's going to smoke him early. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think uh, Cowboy is good when you stand in front of him or if you let him march you backwards. Connor doesn't let anybody march him backwards. Connor's going to push Donald backwards. Cowboy's not very good off his back leg. Connor's very good moving forward. Connor's also very good at going backwards. So if Connor, if Cowboy does press Connor, he's good with that yeah. lock back. And it's one of those things. Is Cowboy fucking me up? Yeah. But I'm going to say, like Cowboy, when you watch him, he has a hitch in his punches a little bit. He doesn't throw straight. Like he has a little pullback and then a punch. Connor a throws tell. a tell. Connor throws when you have that little hitch. Connor goes, nope, boop, and throws that straight left down the middle. Now, Cowboy does kick more, too. But Connor does these, like, push kicks to kind of just. Teeps to the body. Yeah. That's it, really. He's not, he's not destroying the legs. I mean, unless Cowboy sets up a head kick off, like, the first three or four combinations and it lands, which Connor's a good striker. He throws kicks, too. I think Connor just eats him up. Like, I heard coaches or Con- uh, Cowboys coaches say all he has is a straight left hand. You still have to deal with the straight left hand. Every southpaw. Vicente, you right-handed or southpaw? You're a southpaw, aren't you? No, I'm, I'm a right-hand. Like, it's, it's tricky. You I'm switch it up. Yeah. I fight as an orthodox, but I'll go... Uh, Southpaw as well. Yeah, so like kind of- if you say all a guy has is a straight left hand, you still have to deal with the straight left hand. Yeah, you still have to throw something and be in range to maybe get hit with it. So I think. But, but thing too, you guys didn't talk about. Cowboy sometimes has a double leg and he'll shoot in the first rounds just to you know take that round just to make it slow down. He's a guy that starts slow, so sometimes he tries to take to the ground. I think that could be an option for him too. Yes, if he game planned and he's going to fight this fight smart, zap a little bit of that explosiveness out of Connor and go for that takedown, 100%. But even, um, like, the only time we've ever seen Connor out-grappled is when he was tired against Nate and Khabib. And Khabib's out-grappled everyone. Yeah. No, Khabib is another level. Yeah. So you can't really... People always say and try to take that fight into consideration. Nobody's beaten Khabib. So there's no... It's not really a conversation to have, yeah. His ground game is way too much. Yep. Have you ever trained with Khabib at all? No, I haven't. I've met Khabib uh, in, La- in Las Vegas. When he fought McGregor, I fought that same night. And he's a great guy, but never trained with him. Yeah, he's, but when you just watch him fight, he's from Dagestan. He's like a Russian killer, that guy. Just Yeah, that's a whole different level of grappling right there. Yeah, he lives it. He lives wrestling and sambo and whatever they train over there. That crazy basketball they do, that is kind of wrestling basketball. And I don't know what they do. They just, all the guys from Dagestan, they just fight the same and they're tough guys. Oh, for sure. So now, what do you think happens between him and Tony Ferguson? I don't know. It's the kind of fight, you know. Everybody, when you see Ferguson, you're going to think, like, I'm the guy that I'm going to think. He can bring something. He can do something. But at the same time, uh, Khabib is Khabib. He just goes there, does what he does. I don't know. It's I don't know if anybody could beat him. Sincerely, like it's it's and he is not the guy that is gonna risk. You know, if he were a guy that maybe oh okay, but he can stand a little bit and get caught. But he's not the kind of guy that does that. You know, he'll shoot if he needs to right away. Ten seconds into the fight, he'll shoot, take you down. And hold you down. So I think he's going to get that win again. And I don't know. Ferguson is a tricky guy, especially with the elbows. He can cut him up. But I don't know. It's 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 a tough one. I, I got Khabib with that. Yeah, and if he beats Tony, there's not much left for him at 155. Maybe, yeah, I think do some super fights. Maybe, Con- maybe a Conor rematch, but I think he wins that. Maybe Justin Gaethje, which would be the most interesting one. But past that. There's no real matchup for him at 155. Yeah. I mean, we, we had to have to see him go up, maybe. You know, fight Kamaru. That would be a crazy fight. Is he big enough for Kamaru? I've heard Kamaru's huge. You would know this, right? Kamaru is big. He's definitely like, way bigger than, than Khabib. But at the same time, if he's beating everyone in his division, 
he's he has to move, you know, either up or down. I don't think he could go down. So, so he's he got to look for. Yeah. So man, Ali's got all the moves right now. Either it's Khabib, yep. it's Khabib going up to fight Kamaro or something like that. Well, yeah. a- after Gaethje, all right, let's say Khabib beats Ferguson, Gaethje. What about the dude that beat Gillespie last? Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee is about to fight. If Kevin Lee wins his next fight, I think they're trying to match up Kevin Lee with Islam Makachevich. Oof. Yeah, so. If that's... He, and that's Khabib's boy. Similar style, but I think Islam might be southpaw, but. But if he beats that dude, then yeah, he's fucking, I think he's right in line for a title. Yeah. Maybe another win away. He might be like a, because he has those two losses to Ayaquinta. Oh, yeah. That'll always be like his Achilles heel, if you will. So Vicente, crowded welterweight division. Who do you want to fight next? Man, I want to fight a lot. Mike Perry. Well, I fought him, but I will fight him again. Definitely. I will fight him again. No problem with that. I think he's a guy that deserves a, a, a rematch. We had a tight fight. You know, I thought I got the win, but many people thought he had the win. So I would like to make that clear for everyone that I won. <laughs> so, but, you know, he's a great guy. He definitely, we had a lot of respect for each other after the fight. And whenever he wants it, he, if, if he definitely wants that rematch, I'm, a, I'm the guy that is willing to give him the rematch, no problem. But I'm always looking up. I'm always looking to move up. So if I can get anybody inside the top 15, I'm going to try to get that. You know, Joff Neal is a guy that I've been looking at. He's been looking great. You know, he's beat two of the guys that I beat. He beat Bilal Muhammad and he beat Nico Price. And he beat Perry. So, and he beat Perry, yeah. He so beat three Perry. guys. Yeah, he, he fucked Perry up, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's a guy that definitely uh, looks like a good challenge. I, I would like to fight him for sure. All right, so maybe you versus Jeff Neal in April? Yeah, that would be a good one. All right, something like that. I mean, you're still up there, too. You could even maybe go a little higher than Jeff Neal Stan, at the moment. Stan will reach out to uh, the matchmakers and set that up for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll DM Sean Shelby and tell him this is the next fight you got to make. See what he does. Yep. But nah, that's how it is. You know this, Vicente. And I, Dennis has said this many times. They want you to put it out there. Like, they don't yeah. want they, they don't want guys to be like, yo, I'll fight anybody because then it's like, fuck, now I got to sit and match make. When you actually call someone out, they'll see if the date lines up. And if it works, then, oh, all right, yeah, we'll make this fight. Yeah, that that's something that I took a while to learn. You know, because I'm I'm not the kind of guy that trash talks. Right. But at the time, you can call people out and not trash talk. So that's what I recently learned, you know. I was just the guy that I'll fight anyone. You know, I love fighting. Whoever you put in there, I'm going to be excited. But at the same time, I got to be intelligent. I got to call my moves and and make sure that I go up the division. And, you know, I cannot be fighting just for fighting and, and not improve. So... You know, working now with Ali also, he has helped me so much to make the right move. So I feel like I'm, I'm in a good path. Oh, definitely. You got the right manager. So, yeah, P- Pettis is moving down back to 155. They got him ranked at 70. So, yeah, Jeff Nia would be the most logical. He's only one ranked one ahead of you, though. Yep. Other than that, you got Nate Diaz, who we don't know if he's fighting. Thompson, who you just fought. Maya, who's about to fight Gilbert. Dos, yeah. Dos Anjos, who's about to fight Michael Chiesa, maybe even the winner of that would be a good fight for you. Yeah, yeah that would be a good one. And then we got Leon Edwards, who's probably fighting Woodley, and then Miles Vidal and Covington. So, yeah. Jeff, we're going to see Jeff, if Miles is going to fight or what he's going to do. Maybe he's going to get Connor after this fight, if Connor wins. I think he's going to fight Connor. Yeah. If the UFC's smart and they want to make, you know. A billion, yeah, that's a, a couple million, sense. yeah, or a billion, however much fight that money would generate, or however much money that fight would generate. That's the fight they should go with. But Vicente, we appreciate the time. Manish, you got anything else for Vicente? Love you, dude. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me and had a lot of fun, man. Fuck yeah. That's what we do over here. For sure. We'll make you a regular. We appreciate the time. Good conversation. Good laughs. 
And we hope you get your next one, hopefully, maybe April in the Barclays. Yep, that'd be a good one, man. Yeah, for sure. I will have fun there. Absolutely. So everybody be sure to check out Vicente Luque. Again, Vicente, thank you. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Take care, guys. Thanks. Peace.